<laughs> Dinner. It's the Verrier Podcast. <laughs> Back at it again. Back at it again. Sean and Cass. At Krispy Kreme. Yeah. We had Mare with us. Uh, this is about our third time. Fourth time re- report- recording this podcast today. Yeah, we're trying. This is probably our third or fourth attempt. A couple of false starts that were just our normal shit. And then one where we're 32 minutes in and fucking someone wouldn't stop using a leaf blower the whole time. So I was extremely distracted. And then I uh, went to pee and saw that there was an Amber Alert that made it so we weren't recording anyway. So you know how it goes. Yeah, no, it was so funny. It was like not it not record um the leaf blowers felt like such the karma for us like having the rocky starts yeah and i was like well if we could have just gotten it together an hour ago we would have had perfect silence yeah and then um we were like trying not to be judgy about the leaf blower because we're just like you know what we're getting into a good vibe and then i think the universe was like this podcast sucks (laughs) the sound sucks yeah fuck man (laughs) <laughs> I said some really cool things too, and I was like, I, I could tell, like I probably had like a really annoyed look on my face. I'm like, getting perturbed by things people are doing that really shouldn't bother me at all, you know? Yeah, no, that's I think that's kind of where we're at. Is like, uh, we're very blessed to be down here in Georgia. Yes. Um, Mare's grandmother's house. She's been in a nursing home for a few years, but um, her house is here for when her family visits her and that sort of thing. But so. We've been able to be here, and it's been awesome because Mary's been able to visit her grandma and help her out and do different things. So, yeah, it's been awesome being in suburbia, running to the beach and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting uh, change of pace for us city folk. And really, we never take vacations either. Like we go a lot of places, but it's not like we're on vacation. Like our, our life kind of is like a vacation. So there's nothing to take a vacation from. This might have been a vac- vacation for you, but I'm probably working more. Every day than usual. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's it's felt really nice to be down here and have access to the beach and be able to go running every day with no shirt on and get sun all over my body. Yeah. What are we now? About a, a month outside being out of our apartment. And I think it's been pretty nice. I haven't really looked back. I haven't had five seconds to think about it. And I guess that's just how our life is. Yes. It, it's almost like it's been so easy that I'm like, wait, why did we pay this much rent for so long? If when we leave, I know. we weren't going to think about it, it anymore. It, yeah, it is a good question, but I think we needed that place for as long as we had it for a reason. And at the very least to, to meet Mare, you know? That's, I think, where we our conclusion came. is like, well, we had to meet Mare, and we wouldn't have met her if we were just living upstate or wherever else, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. But I'm, I'm starting to realize it now a few weeks out from living in the city, um, 18 years of living in the city kind of what it does to you and and what it's doing to your nervous system all the time do you feel like you've been like able to calm down more since we're not in the heat of things um i'm in the process of it i'm in the process of of like uh adjusting to something that's not feel like as high of a frequency Mm. so it's been good for me yeah it kind of naturally balances you so then you kind of have to do the internal balance from there Mm mm-hmm you know, and you're going to bring your bullshit wherever you go. You know, it's not just the place. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I think that's an important thing for young people to hear, you know. Yeah. I know when I was young, it was like, oh, if I only could be here, or if I only had this and that, you get there and you're like, oh, I'm still me. I still got a lot of work to do. Okay. Yeah. No, I was like, kept having this feeling of stagnation. And then like, we went upstate. I'm like, damn, I'm still stagnating. Like, I just expect that all of a sudden I'll be like this, like, uh peaceful buddha like person and you know or being like uh much more devoted to my practices or taking the practices further and i think i am because i'm finding like practice in in the littler things of like walking the dog and i've like here sweeping the porches kind of areas like my happy place yeah um so yeah i've always been big into uh using the things you have to do every day anyway as like a mindfulness check and to Mm -hmm. i've like i love being the maid of this house (laughs) you're very good it's crazy (laughs) you're a great maid yeah (laughs) yeah like we've we've like it's weird because there's like the purpose like we've rented places with mayor before and we've like lived together for you know uh, periods of time but like now down here with her dog here whenever it feels most like us living together than anything before and I see the roles we all slip into very quickly. Yeah, you know, Mare makes amazing food. You 
keep an amazing house and you're back there making the money i try to make some money <laughs> yeah, you're, you're back there doing getting the money but yeah i do try to uh, it is very important to me i think to uh to keep tidy and, and like mayor says i like things to be tidy on on all levels and if they're not i'm like really out of sorts yeah yeah it, it feels like um like I'm sacrificing a part of me that's more at peace when, when I'm allowing things to be out of sorts on, on many levels, you know. If you see my room a mess, you could probably tell what kind of storm I'm in. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so funny how, like, uh, your space can be such a reflection. Like, this morning I got up and I was like, okay, before I do anything else, like, I need to... Because I've been living with, like, my clothes just piled on the floor, but, mm. like, in organized piles because th there's yeah. not really room in the drawers or whatever. And... um yeah, I'm like, okay, I just need to clear this space so I can clear that space. The big space for me that needs to get cleared off and that I don't clear enough is my desktop yeah. of my computer. Oh, it's a fucking mess. Oh, every shut, time shut, I shut open shut a computer that you've been on, I'm like, what the hell's going on it's here? It's so bad. You just open every pro every tab in every program and it's have them all running at once. It's not even that. It's like my I just am always dragging stuff onto the desktop and not being it. super mindful of what it is or where it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It stresses me out. I mean, I, I think that's one of the one of the crosses I bear in life is figuring out how to deal with disorganization and chaos because I, I I freak out, I really do. Yeah. I, I, you know, when when chaos is introduced to the situation, I get freaked out. I mean, I can rise to the occasion and come up with a plan, this or that, but if my hands are tied, I'm fucking I'm, I'm up Shit's Creek with a turd for a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> is that a saying? It sounds like a saying. Uh, that's an a Ween song. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. We put out a movie this week. Yeah. If you watched it, thank you. Appreciate yeah. you checking it out. Yeah, the name of the movie is American Sunset. And it's our fourteenth one. It feels really nice to put one out again. It's my eleventh one with you. Yeah. But that's still pretty good. It's still a lot of movies. Still a lot of movies. Considering we've been together what, like eleven years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technically pans out to a movie a year, so Yeah. And, it, and it, you know, we had a little bit of a rough birthing pain with this one, but it was just like last second doubts or anything. Nothing, no technical problems, nothing like that. The project was was birthed pretty cleanly. Oh, a couple things. There were some technical issues. There yeah. always is. Yeah. But, um, no, it's, it's uh, I'm so glad it's out there. It's one of those ones that I think you and I enjoyed making probably most, more than any other one we've made, just because we were just like in the flow and just so appreciative of, you know, the amount of time we actually spend capturing the movies we make is so small yeah so like when you're there show up for it yeah and we were doing it with our best friends like yeah joey and drew and mike who had been on florida man the sound guy and stuff like that so yeah. we and we loved steve and god it was just such a pleasure trip and i think it took us a while because we filmed that fourth of july weekend it took us a minute to well first we were thinking kathy would edit it and and there were some delays in that department but i think ultimately we just kind of had to get to a place where we were kind of removed from it to just reapproach it and do it in a way that was just like, what's the most obvious and fun way to put this together Yeah. and not too self-serious. And Bob really killed it. So that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people that make films are, uh, are not in our position. You know what I mean? They're not really part of the working class or they don't have to be, you mm -hmm. know? So I, I think there, so automatically you're dealing with a certain class of artists who even have access to make stuff on a certain level. And um, I think start, this stuff starts to feel similar. And I think it's important that we make films, even if we're making them on unemployment money <laughs> and, and fucking bar, beg borrowing and stealing to do them. I think it's important that we do it because I think we're showing people a perspective that a lot more people share than would be reflected in the films out there, if that makes sense. I think so, yeah. I mean, I I like that we kind of just, like, your instinct is just like, okay, let's make the most fun movie ever, you know? Like, I feel like there was there's not a m lot of filters of rules. And so for that reason, there could be some birthing pains because it's not, there's no clear trajectory of, like, oh, this film festival or this thing. It's like, oh, we're literally just, like, it's an offering, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it can be a little uncomfortable sometimes. It's more uncomfortable than having the like, to me, than having the cradle of like um, validation, you know, yeah. and uh, validation and laurels and like 
bragging rights and all this stuff to really just be like we made this thing we're very proud of it now here it is find it in due time Mm -hmm. not we're not really too worried about you know pushing you to see it it's it's available we want people to know it's available and it's out there um but really what means more to me than anything is when people see it and respond well to it and imbue it with like the meaning and depth that we see in it and that we we made it with that that means the world to me and when people share it because um people in our situation i don't know we don't have money to do pr and we don't have money to do film festivals like that costs money like like people act like that's no big deal it's a it's a hundred dollar fee every time you go to do it and if you've ever applied to film festivals you're going to get rejected from most of them Mm -hmm. so you know this is the way we do our thing and i feel like our little hack used to be we have our own following and we could put our shit out to our followers and it's fucking awesome and now they kind of take that away they're like you got to pay to reach your followers so Anytime you see something that, that Cass and I made or an independent uh, artist made and you dig it, sharing it is the best possible fucking thing you could do for that artist is, is just share it. Pay with attention and recommend it to someone else and it spreads the mycelium and it makes us want to keep doing it because um, I, I, I love spreading joy into people's life. I love, I love taking something as uh, a guy as unexpected as Steve who's very abrasive, you know, He's very abrasive. He's he's like, he's a lot to be in a room with. So so we give people that that sacred space, the sacred safe space of having a screen between you and him. But it's still a lot, and I don't want to take that away from people. I want, I still want them to experience Steve as to what he's actually like. But um, I had the most fucking fun making that because I love the challenge of going towards someone like Steve, who even on the phone we were like. This is a lot. You could tell he's drinking Red Bulls. And, <laughs> you know, I love the guy. I love, I, him so I, much. I love him so much, and I knew that right away. So all the other stuff just felt like static that I needed to see through, and that we needed to see through. And even when we were shooting it, there was that static. We we're like, "Damn, like Steve, Steve, like we need you to calm down a little bit so we can get something here." And that that barely works. You know what I mean? You tell someone that, and they 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 fucking act crazier. So, you know, that was our bit of a guru. Steve was a guru, you know. He, he's someone that if we were at a party with him, I would be, like, on the opposite end of the spectrum. I'd probably be standing on the opposite side of the party because it's like, I'm not like, I'm not like that, you know. Yeah, you're quieter. I'm, I'm very quiet. And, um, you know, he, he, he commands a lot of attention. Yeah. And um, I, th- I think it's a really interesting subject. All these subjects that we've gone towards have been a personal guru for me in some way. I could go through each film and tell you why, but... Um, for this one, it's, it's that like Steve is, he represents a part of me that I rarely ever let out, (laughs) you know, the flamboyant, like in your face, machismo, like take a look at me. And for him to take mushrooms on camera, I thought would be really interesting thing to go film and to force us to make something meaningful out of it, I think was the journey I wanted to put myself through. It was for your 40th birthday is kind of how we... Yeah, I was like, this is my present to myself. I (laughs) I, I don't know how much money we have or if we have any, but spend it on this. (laughs) I'm glad we did. And I also feel like it's such cosmic winks that there's so much about it, like... The stretch limo, monster truck limo, feels like an ode to Rocky from The Bowler. And also, you know, Steve's personality a bit is like... Oh, damn, I didn't even think about that limo driving, white limo driving dudes. I can't get enough of them. Yeah, um, we have the drag racing part of the movie, which is like an ode to Black Bike Week. Mm. Um, We have Taking Mushrooms, ode to Joshua Tree, Mm. where the mother and daughter took mushrooms. We didn't really get this in the film, but Steve used to be addicted to opiates, which I felt like was an ode to Oxiana. I I think and also the way we were presenting the film felt Mm -hmm. Oxiana-ish, parts of it. Trying to go through all the movies because I feel like they're all in there somewhere. You know, Steve's a juggalo and he doesn't know it. He's totally this felt a like juggalo. American Juggalo three. Yeah, just us going to all the different. Oh, and there's like little moments where you're like in the ride that is very American Juggalo. Mm, yeah. Or he's like, if you're not enjoying life every day. Yeah. Something's wrong. And then I love that we were like, you know what? This needs some of these some captions and some of these moments to be a little accentuated which was like we love Les Blank and that was felt like such a yeah ode and honor to him and yeah 
his style. And then I love that, you know, you've done this in other movies, just played whatever music you want. Like American Juggalo just has like the misfits and stuff like that. But yeah. this week really <laughs> went balls to the wall. We're like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Well, we, uh, we just took every song that we wanted in the movie and we uploaded it to YouTube and saw what the consequences were. And there were none. Oh, the one consequence is I, I don't think we can show this movie in Japan. All right. Well, if you're Japanese and you're hearing this and you want to see our new movie, American Sunset, <laughs> reach out. We will get you a link. Yeah. But right now, because of uh, a song called Feels Too Good by The Move <laughs> that takes place three quarters of the way through the movie for like five seconds, we can't get it in Japan. But I thought it was a worthy sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and I also feel like we're just trying. I feel like this is like movie as like a vibe. The movie is the movie is the experience. Yeah. You know. It's not about an experience. It is an experience. Mm-hmm. It's not about psychedelics. It is psychedelic. It's not about connection. It is connection. Yeah. It's not about medicine. It is medicine. And um, that's, to, to me, the high water mark for what we're going for and what we do always is to kind of transcend the, like, what's your film about thing? Mm-hmm. And more like, oh, you, you just got to fucking experience this. Right. Um, and, you know, we did fun things in this. And, like, I, I think uh, all filmmakers should have all tools at play at all ta- times to make the most effective thing. And um, for this one, yeah, we had some fun with some captions because we're, we're watching the movie down and here's how the captions come up to begin with. We're huge fans of Les Blank and he plays around with that style um, here and there in some movies. And it's always so funny. It always like it always captures you like, why did he choose that to highlight? Okay, interesting. And we just had these lines that people were saying that kept standing out to me within other things they were saying to me, they would say these things that just felt like that wasn't coming from you. That one was not, that one was above your personality. That one came so from the heart that I think it was delivered from the angels that I think it was delivered from the mushroom. So I just heard uh, every time we watched the cut down and it was a thing we only added at the very last second. Yeah. Every time we were watching it down, I'm like, that's the mushroom right there. That line is the mushroom saying, um, when she comes to you, don't be afraid. Yeah. Or this is God's world. Right. You know, or or try this, or or make make sure and share that experience, brother. Like there's just there there's just things that I was like, uh, the mushroom is speaking through people. The mushroom guided us out there. Um, you know, Steve, our subject in the movie, heard us on concrete podcasts. We went on to talk about Florida man, and we ended up talking about mushrooms and psychedelics the whole time. He hears us Always. on there. And he's like, come film me, take mushrooms. And we're like, yeah, whatever. And then we're like, let's just do it. You know? Yeah, no, That's the spirit I want to make all of our movies in. And that's pretty much how we've made them all. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, let's just do it. We're not, like, strategic. It's like (laughs) we're inspired and then we do it. No, I think that, I mean, we're definitely inspired. And that makes it easy. It really is the fuel in our tank in so many ways what just staying inspired and wanting to have fun with our friends and yeah wanting to make fun things and watch fun things and well we like you said we made this with our best friends could we have had a better time on my 40th birthday than being out in indiana like running around fucking hanging out fucking doing drag racing gambling like filming people smoking weed like having just like the most memorable time with our friends and having cameras there to capture it no and that's like honestly i love i love taking pictures everywhere i go but it's it's so funny on a lot of times like on these films like i have the least amount of documentation in a way and it's like well, I was there. You know what I mean? I, we have these time capsules oh, of the We have experience. a record of it that's going to outlive us. Yeah, yeah, as long as the internet stays strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's it's an offering to the universe of like... Um, I want to think about how to say this, but it's um, as wide as I can get my consciousness. Like a snapshot of that is what is is what these films represent to me. Mm-hmm. You know? They're they're my worldview, uh, at, at my at my highest self. That that that's what that's what life feels like to me. That's how magical it is. That's how full of wisdom and grace it is. Um, that that's how heightened everything is. That is me and you, at our highest form of consciousness. The widest we can we can pull it out, and that's why we keep exploring that's why we're psychonauts because we want to widen it even more to bring back some more remnants but but that that's what these experiences are you know so 
for me it's like it's it's more than like a film or like checking a box or like cool we got another one out there like it's it's like a demarcation of who i want to be of how i want to see things it's a reminder of how mm-hmm. i want to see the world so that's why i say it's a very spiritual thing for me it's very personal you know not all these are going to resonate with people i could tell like we sent this some people and it's just like you could tell it bothers them you know yeah it's definitely gonna bother white girls who are like uptight <laughs> <laughs> for sure you know i do it for those moments like where that guy was like I'm a Bible man. I, you know, <sighs> and then you hear the marching band in the background and it like goes to his thing where he's like enough said. And it just like, the music is just like, burr, 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 burr. yeah, we and didn't do that. That was real life. That was real life. So it's like those little cosmic winks where things just like line up perfectly is like enough to keep me g- going out there. I know forever. I, you know, me too. I, I, you know what I think of? It's such a weird, obscure, um, reference. But it was so good that it made it in the final cut. I did a commercial for AT and T about um, w- wild fans of uh, the Texas Longhorns. Right. Remember? Yeah. You, you the thirteenth fan. Yeah. Yeah. So we found these two dudes who lived together who were like the craziest Texas Longhorn fans. And the idea of this little five-minute film I was making about them for AT and T was like, this is how we party. We fucking do it up all day. We get the we get the ribs in the morning. We get the, so I'm I'm following this dude, and we get the ribs in the morning, and then we we get all the special spices, and he's like very just like he cares, and he's doing all this stuff, and he's working on it all day. But the guy's a total goof, and like you know, it, but I'm I'm trying to make him look good and whatever, and he it's like a ten hour process of us filming, and this motherfucker cooks these ribs, and goes to take them off the grill, and they just fall in the dirt and 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 grass. I live for this shit. Yeah. It was the funniest thing I've ever fucking seen in my life, let alone captured. Because I think that was it Isaac? I think Isaac shot that uh-huh. one. Perfect pan. Perfect. This is what documentary shooting's all about. He's like, on the guy, on the grill, things coming off the grill, right on the ground, and then we're up to the reaction. <laughs> and it's just like, that will keep, that little like, that little thing, that charge that that sends through you, you're like, yeah. oh, I got to keep going out there. There's fucking angels with us providing us with these little moments that oh. just we get such a kick out of. Florida man, when the guy goes down to the pier and he's like, someone should clean that wall. <laughs> and, then he's, and then he throws a cigarette and he's like, sorry for littering. That kept me up for days. And then he's like, you want to see my bike? And then it's like down. In- <laughs> that kept me up for days. I, I would wake up in the middle of the night laughing about that. I couldn't sleep. Like, only four people knew about that. The only people that knew about that were the people that were there. And yeah. I was like, this is the funniest thing maybe anyone's captured. Yeah. That was the most fucking cosmic, hilarious dude coming through. It's, you know, what I, li- what I live for is a lot of people, and I always say this, like, we'd go and make these things, and we just arrive anywhere with our camera, and people show up like they've been waiting for this moment their whole life. And to see how people, what they want to do with that moment is the funniest fucking shit I've ever seen in my life. It's worth pursuing, at least for us. It's really worth pursuing. And it really one, gets me going like nothing else. This one was definitely our love letter to Indiana. We have so many friends out in Indiana yeah, and like yeah. people who are from Indiana. Bob actually was from Our Indiana. editor, Bob Weiss, shout out. It's our first time working with a different editor other than Kathy Gatto in years because she wasn't available. And... uh cosmically fucking weirdly bob's like oh yeah this is where i was born in this area yeah like what so crazy but yeah a lot of friends out there it's i i feel like it's our love letter to uh america's heartland yeah yeah we love them i love them i love america's heartland god it's beautiful out there oh yeah yeah we love them all it seems like everywhere we go haven't been to alaska yet we haven't been to Alaska. We should look on a map the places that we've done like proper documentation and and like there's probably big like the the southeast or the southwest. I feel like we never fuck around over there. Montana, would love to get out to Montana. Yeah, yeah. But our work is with people, you know. Yes, it's and and, and, and uh, no, uh, this is what I'm saying. Like this is what I'm realizing more and more. Like the the more we the the more we keep focusing on this thing. It's like our our destiny is is crystallizing before us, and what we're all about is like crystallizing in the form of these films, and 
we seem to pull out of people something very unique and wild. And I think it's because that's what we focus on making ourselves. And people people see a wildness in us that I don't even think we always have on display, but they feel it. And they it gives them a permission slip to allow that side of them out. And the results are fucking hilarious, like it, because they're so varied, you know, and, and seeing how people respond to us and see seeing if, if it makes them close up or if they want to be the wild person or what they're going to do when they are the wild person or what their interpreter or interpretation of that even is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's funny making these films where it's like, yeah, the, the people are like, you make a movie? We're like, yeah. And it's like really not about like they're literally right in front of us making what it's about. Mm-hmm. we don't know not quite sure yet and all the people start <laughs> really talking about the same thing and then start you know like like uh, the movie makes itself it, yeah. it makes itself a motif starts to appear if you're paying attention right and then it, like uh, yeah like the edit for this was fairly easy in that sense you know we have a couple ideas down the pipe which we've talked about on here very excited about wooks because you know we're 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 becoming wooks ourselves so it feels only appropriate <laughs> to try <laughs> document the final form of the hippie yeah <laughs> yeah i really want to make the one where we kind of go to like places where you can gamble like on on this on along the america's <laughs> highways you know <coughs> gas stations and that sort of thing yeah there's more and more gambling popping up we're noticing as we go around um because because you notice more ads for sports betting mm-hmm. and then you notice more ads for like hey do you have a gambling problem it's a drug that is uh, pretty entertaining to bear witness to. So I think it seems like a crazy rabbit hole. It's art, like you know what I mean. Yeah. It, it, well, it's it's definitely. Um, I mean, it, it it's one of the things. If you're going to take on a lifelong project of uh, making a mosaic of America, you're really going to end up making a mosaic of a, a lot of people who are addicted to a lot of weird things. And so we're going through it. We're going through it. And we've gotten addicted to a lot of weird things ourselves along the way. <laughs> <laughs> you really got to emerge with the subject, so. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You have to see life through their eyes. I mean, right now we're hangers on to Mare. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. I mean, she's providing. She's she's putting a roof over our heads right now. Yeah, man. We're like... The difference, like, I was telling this to my mom yesterday. She called, and she was just like, how are you guys doing down there? I'm like, yeah, I think this is the first time I felt normal in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I didn't realize it. Um, it just to get away, it just, just to get away from, like, there's literal noise behind us right now, but to just, like, like, to get away from, like, the noise and the static of the city and our families and our friends groups and everything, just to be out on an island in some old lady's house who doesn't live here anymore. Very grateful. It's a time capsule. We're in a time capsule. This place is frozen in 1979, and it's a—it's such an amazing experience for that in itself. But just the spaciousness and, you know, being able to digest and wrap my head around some things and wrap my head around our move and putting out this movie and, and what we want to do. It's like I'm feeling normal for the first time in a while, but I think of huge huge factor and I, not a lot of people get to taste this in their life is like we don't have rent right now and we're not pay- this isn't like, like the, an airbnb it's the biggest fear moving in with your folks but if they have the space for you to move in like your parents have a spacious basement yeah they have a whole half of a house that they don't use and they're like yeah stash your shit here while you guys are like busy making movies and stuff and like we have good living opportunities right now surprisingly you know um we're very we, blessed we're very way. blessed very we have lucky. opportunities coming our way um, and, uh, but, but just like, isn't it, isn't it weird how it, it just, it hits different that this isn't an Airbnb. It That's does. what I'm saying. It hits it, different. When you're just like bleeding money, you're just like, okay. there's, there, but I'm so used to hemorrhaging cash. Like that's what my life is of living in the city for 18 years and trying to keep girls impressed and shit. And like, it's so funny. I'm Jesus like, Jesus Christ. Um, I like, I, we were spending so much money that I couldn't even pay attention to That's how much money saying. I was spending. I was like, I can't even think about it. Now I'm like, and then you know stops. what? Maybe we can save money. <laughs> yeah. And then it stops for a second and we're in a, and we're in paradise and we're not paying for it. And it's like a gift that my soul needed just to, just to believe in something again. You know what I mean? Like that not everything is about a financial exchange. 
you know not everything is a, is a product like that we're actually just down here mayor's grandma's dying someone needs to be there for her you know everyone else in her family is really busy we have very we have a lot of spaciousness so mayor can be over there every day and go through the weirdest psychedelic fucking craziness and, and we'll do our, we'll do a podcast about all this shit but um yeah that that we that we can basically house sit while mayor looks after her grandma and we can all come together we did a sweet candy flip the other day <laughs> that was wild yeah <laughs> oh man that was wild. That was wild. Cruising around on a little rented golf cart to the beach with Mowgli loving it. And Man. it was epic. Yeah. It was kind of, it started as a joke, like, because we were, we've been meaning to do a candy flip for a while. And just for one reason or another, we keep putting it off or, or it I puts it, us off. It's important. I think it's important to put a good set and setting and intention around it. And also it is like a, it is a very special high. So you want to be thoughtful it's sacred. about it. It's sacred. And it's so fleeting. Mm -hmm. it's so quick so you really want to uh, be set up to share with people if you want to share something right yeah i feel like we we were really good about like sharing the love with each other and all that stuff sharing the love and the forgiveness and the apologies and the retelling of, of stories that maybe hurt us a little bit um but for the most part like we just fucking had the best time we yeah it started as a joke. I was like, we should rent a little, like everyone drives around this island on golf carts. It's like, they're, they're just merged with traffic. They're, everything is like people, like half the cars here are golf carts and you can rent them. So we're like, let's rent a golf cart for our, our candy flip. And we did it. It was the best time. It was the best thing we've ever done. If you're going to make something mes memorable, you should really go all the, the way. The setting here is literally a screensaver. It's literally what they Spanish use on a Peloton. Moss. I, yeah. we, if you remember, we should put the video that I took of the Spanish moss. I'll try to remember. Um, 31. Yeah, around 31 minutes. I'll, I'll edit something in here. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's the most it's the most idyllic, beautiful setting ever. So it was almost like the candy flip, because we're only going to do one or t maybe two candy flips a year. So, you know, we want them to be ideal, and it was almost like like the spirit of the trip knew, like, wait, put it off, wait till you're down here, it's just you three. And it was just us three, and we got a golf cart. So we take the acid, and we just get on the golf cart and have the craziest fucking acid come up, drives, just driving around on this fucking golf cart all over the island. It was the funniest fucking thing I think we've ever done. Just laughing uncontrollably, blasting Grateful Dead, just pulling up to all the beaches, just hanging out, catching some sun. So fun. And then we... So that, like, we, I don't know, we finished taking, we, we, like, stepped it up on the acid. We, like, took, like, micro doses. It's not like we dropped a whole bunch. We we stepped it up. You ended up taking, like, what? Nine or eight. Nine, eight or nine micro doses. I took, like, five. And uh, still, it was, like, we came back from riding around on that thing, and it, the acid really started hitting us. And I was, like, whoa. And, of course, it was, like, how are we going to take this molly? This is crazy. It always feels insane. And, and, and like every single time I know that I'm going to love it, but I want my, it's like my body wants to bail on it within five minutes. I'm like, I'm so glad we did this. Oh, as soon as you do it, as soon as you do it, it's like, Oh, cause cool. you're so high and you're like, Oh, and there's something about the Molly that kind of like grass settles it yeah. somehow, you know, even though it's like gets you higher in a different way. It's like, it brings you into the heart. It, it's, it's, it, that's what it is. That's what the, it, 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 it's like you have, you take this acid and you have everything available to you. And the Molly's just like, you're taking a one way trip to the fucking heartland. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and you just go right in there and it's, and it's more comfortable, I think, than having everything available. Um, so yeah, we did. We had the courage to do it. We did say like, Hey, we're just going to consent. We all want to do this, right? Like we're going to do this. And there's like, hell yeah. I'm take this fucking shit right now. Yeah. She's a boss. She's a boss. I got, I got definitely, sp like, definitely have those moments where you're just, like, so high and you just kind of, reality still dissolves. And, you know, as for as many times as reality dissolves, it still surprises me when it happens. Like, because you, you remember and then you forget. And it's like, I, f I reliably will forget. You know, I can't mm. always stay high on acid. So I, I do come down and I forget the wide breadth of what this life experience is or what it means or the reflections that we are of each other or that it, I'm part of something that is 
part of everything else and is an infinite and I don't exactly understand what's going on and wow you forget I forget and then I do it I'm like <clears throat> whoa I forgot and then it's a reminder mm. and um it's not always a pleasant reminder sometimes because you're just like you're you get very we're, we want to make sense of this world you know that's kind of like what our faculties are meant for you know, we just make yeah. sense of things. Yeah. And so when you take something that expands you so far out that like the way you were making sense of things doesn't really apply anymore, it can be a little. No, that, that, that's, that's ego death. That's all the ego's doing. It's, yeah. it's just the storytelling machine, you know. It, it's you making sense of this uh, and putting things into categories so you can keep a narrative going. Right. And then that narrative goes away and you're just in and of the moment. And... It could be a heavy realization that you've been here before, been here forever. Yeah. You know, that that heaven is literally that. And and it's accessible all the time. And it's right here. And we're just so distracted. I had some really powerful experiences. Like, uh, I did my meditation. And I felt like mm -hmm. while I was doing, I went back to do my meditation, it, it really... I was like integrating my mantra into my cells in a whole different way. It really oh. was really very cool. Yeah. I had a really, I had a solid, I think I did a 27 minute. That's how long I was able to meditate. And it was good. It was a really good meditation. It's important to do those things. A few things that we like shouted out as we were taking it was like, um, we're going to remember to breathe. We're going to remember to listen. We're going to remember to loosen our jaws. And we're going to, anytime anyone thinks of it, drink water. <laughs> yeah. You know, just drink a little water. <laughs> well, then you got to stop drinking water. That's where you messed up. It's like at a uh, certain yeah. hour, you need to stop drinking water so that you can fall asleep and stay asleep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, it was a good time. And we uh, we took Mowgli to the beach after the Molly hit. So, like, we had two come-ups that we just, like, rode out in the lawn back here. We were just, like, flopping around in the lawn. We had our come-up on acid and then the come-up on the Molly and the acid. But once we were leveled out on both, we like took those little rides and we took a, a ride down to the beach and they allowed dogs on the beach. It's just like so incredibly chill here, you know? So it's just like we just take. Oh, how about how I got there and I was like, you guys need to stop me because I'm going to just start taking pictures of everybody. As soon as we get to the beach, Cass is just like, oh, you guys are going to need to control me because I want to take pictures of everyone. And I'm like. That's what you always do. You guys were both online. like, just, you, you guys were both like, thumbs up. We're go like, talk to people and take pictures of them. And I was like, really? And yeah. then I had the best time. And like, as soon as we got there, there were these two beautiful women in these dresses, and they just looked incredible. And I was like, they're both both they were met at a wedding. I was like, and I was thinking, they met that day. Well, so in my mind, I was like, everyone and their mom has a fucking phone with a good camera. Like, these girls are obviously besties. They don't need me taking a picture of them. But they looked so beautiful. And they were in, like, these dresses that honestly looked like prom dresses. So I yeah. just went up to them. I was like, you guys are so beautiful. Can I take your picture? And they were like, oh, yeah, they loved it. They threw their purses down and everything. And then I come to find out that they met at the wedding. That day. That day. Both their names are Crystal, which we were having some funny Crystal synchronicities earlier in the day. Yeah. And their names are spelled the same. And I don't know. I, it just... You cemented their friendship. I really did. And then I texted them both the photo. And now they're texting each other on the chain with me on it, being like, hey, Crystal, call me. Like, they're texting each it other. It was crazy. It was crazy. That's how they got each other's numbers, because I sent these epically beautiful photos of them together. The, you're, you were vibrating at such a high frequency that it was contagious. That's why it's like, for us to not let you go loose, if that's what your instinct is, would be like a crime against humanity. You need to... You've made such good friends doing that very I'm thing. I'm still texting a friend that I made in Hawaii. You met on the beach because you took some molly. And you you um, you see the beauty in things, and you cannot help yourself. You want to take pictures, and you're you're such a good photographer, no matter what. But I feel like Thanks. when you're on Molly, it's you're really a f <laughs> that's how photographers <laughs> operate all the time, though. Yeah, like people that that have a fucking crazy passion for it. Yeah, they just love it. They yeah, they, they can't go through life without seeing it like that, and like that's how you get on Molly, and it's such a beautiful thing. You made I saw you make a bunch of friends in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just crazy that I, like, this was five years ago now or something, and yeah. I still text with this guy. Yeah. I was texting with him the other morning, you know? He, we both share a passion for, passion for beautiful women, Ooh. so. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, it's, just, it's funny. We both share a passion for beautiful women. No, it is. We, that's what we literally text about. He's like, how's your girlfriend? And I'm like, oh, and he tells, so he sends beautiful. me naked pictures of all his ex-girlfriends. Oh, you should say, Mary, am I allowed to send this guy nudes to you? He would love it. No, I know. But he, he loves it a little it. too much that I'm like, I don't really want to do this. Dudes, see, that's the whole thing. Dudes always ruin it. But he always, he always says that he's kind of like not sexual anymore, but I, it's a friendship. He's not creepy. He's like yeah. a kind soul who makes instruments and paintings and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, But then I ran into this other couple and they had this like big, I don't know what kind of dog that was big ass dog and i just took these like family photos of them that i'm sure are the best photos that the three of them oh, have yeah, together definitely, definitely so fun and Mowgli is back at the beach for the first time since he lived in hawaii however many years ago i've never seen him smile so much i've it never seen him so happy it made me so cry much. i was like i was like this is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen is like seeing we're getting closer to the beach and you can tell like he's like what's going on here yeah and we get to the beach and he just is fully nature again. He's just a nature boy. I think it just makes sense to just like devote our life to making sure Mowgli's happy every day. Because it makes us happy. Seeing him happy yeah. is like... It's the I, best. I'm like, oh, we're in alignment. Yeah. If we are prioritizing making sure Mowgli gets to the beach, like we're doing something yeah. right. Well, because he needs the same thing as me. It, mm-hmm. Like we're the same. He just, he needs some food served to him <laughs> at, at the right time. Mm-hmm. He needs a little bit of water. Mm-hmm. He needs to run. Mm-hmm. And he needs to be on the beach getting some fucking, some rays, you know? Yeah, and some good pets. And some good, well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Heavy petting. Heavy petting. But yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So, it's just seeing him on the beach. I was like, I was stashing that one away. I was like, this is in the movie of my life so far. Like a little, a little scene in the montage for sure. Like I was just, I was mesmerized by Mowgli and just seeing him get right in the water and, and like, like stare out at the waves and like just listening to his breath, the way he was, he was just like his breathing just slowed down and he just calmed down and the way he wanted to run on the beach and just how fast he could get going. I was just like, I was mesmerized by him. I, I haven't tripped around a lot of animals and I wasn't like tripping. It was like just just in the love space just like like right on just like in the moment like could really just empathize with with that little pup and yeah and we came home and like like uh just chilled out listened to some music smoked some weed and then uh you know it was it was weird like it was like kind of like it was like it's kind of coming down i don't know maybe we could catch some sleep and mare's so good like mare fucking catches sleep like surfers catch waves it's yeah. insane <laughs> you know like for me i'm like oh it's not between 12 and and 2 a.m and the circumstances aren't right i'm not gonna be able to fall asleep and like mare's like she's like oh, okay well cool i'm on all kinds of drugs or whatever she just goes to sleep at 10 p.m or whatever and i was like damn that was like a pro and you and i had sex for like four hours you know yeah we tried i think we d- we successfully did <laughs> we tried <laughs> we tried to have a baby oh yeah <laughs> luckily we thought better of it no we uh we had to move some energy you know yeah it was good for us to connect i think yeah i think once every four years we need to take psychedelics and have sex it's not usually my preference you know it's usually the last thing on my mind yeah but i think of shulgin and shulgin Whose wife, Sasha, or whose wife to Sasha Shulgin, who like discovered him, discovered yeah. MDMA and all its beautiful potential, potential and other chemical opportunities. Um, she was she her whole thing was like, I want to know how you can make love on these drugs. That's my number one priority. So I think of her yeah. at, at an hour like that, where I'm like, all right, let's let's play around with this potential, and it was amazing. It felt amazing. Everything was just incredible. It's so. I I think that um, it's it's uh, fake tantric. It's pseudo tantric. That's kind of. Do you think it's kind of like going into? Um, an isolation tank, like it kind of like that. What isolation tanks do for um, meditation? Like induced meditation. Yeah, it's, it's induced tantric sex, basically. Right. It's chem sex. Yeah. You know, it's like you know, it's, especially on that combination, because it's weird. Like, on acid, I'm not really like horny or wanting to have sex. On Molly, I'm not really like horny or wanting to have sex. On the two together, like. 
<laughs> on it, hour eight. <laughs> on hour eight, on the two together. Yeah, I'm totally down. And uh, yeah, I think that it mimics what a disciplined tantric practice can get you to. Where yeah. the whole thing is um, a steady orgasm. And where well, women can actually just outwardly have orgasms, but like where I'm more of like riding a ejaculation <laughs> ascension. <laughs> it's, it's just wild. It's just wild. I think that you could get there with, with, um, with breath work and time and just like, like just taking the time together. But, uh, yeah, if if you want to have like the VR version, like the you know the undisciplined, just cut to the chase version of that, that's the that's the way to do it. Well, it was so awesome that I think you and I were just both like, oh, let's let's prioritize taking our intimacy to the next dimension. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like yeah. this is awesome. We love this, and if there's ways to do this on the natch, we should explore them. Yeah, you know, it's good to have. Uh, memorable high watermark sexual nights in your life that you can try to live up to again and not in a chase the dragon type of way but just be like whatever we were on to however we were connected then is like that's the goal you know what's possible you know yeah. enter the pleasure kingdom mm, yeah and enter the the kingdom of pleasure that lies within yeah yeah there is one get in sometimes there. you're not sure how spacious and expansive it is but it's pretty fucking big oh yeah it's, when it's, you're on the right gut drugs especially <laughs> yeah yeah well it's uh, being ultimately what it is is a trust thing mm. you know and the breath work and the drugs can m help you fall into um like a safety net yeah but like a like a trusted um pattern with your partner uh, uh, like, like a trusted frequency where it's like okay we're oh we're both occupying this this radio station together mm -hmm. and and we're you know like it's that kind and of we thing. like kept checking and i'm like are you okay that we're still doing this you know and yeah. i was like yeah. yeah it was good no but I, I think i think that's all it, it's it's doing you know and it's it's not necessary to reach those states but it definitely helps you figure out that they exist totally you know so you don't end up uh maybe like like for us i i don't want to stagnate in any part of our life especially not sexually so you're 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 together as long as us and it's like oh a night like that like reinvigorates you and makes you remember like how crazy our fucking sexual connection is and like that that's there for us and that um that those memories are there for us and that we could try for that again and like we don't need drugs for that or anything like that totally well you know what they say um Molly mimics like the first the feelings of like the first three months of a relationship. Yeah, all that oxytocin or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's that's um like the best way that they've like figured out how to clinically describe, you know. You're you got those drugs pumping through you, like the first three years of a relationship. Yeah, I dated someone for about three years, and after that, especially how I felt after three years, I was like, I will never marry someone unless I've been with them for three years, m minimum. Yeah. Like, it was just kind of like that realization that, like, feelings can change. You're in an oxytocin-induced haze. You don't know what the hell's going on. You don't on. know what the hell's going on. You're in on. the thick of a fog. You need to get through that. I mean, mad respect to people who just, like, know <laughs> and fall in love and commit themselves to each other and... Like us, we fell in love right away and have been together 11 years or whatever it is. So I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm Once just we squeezed all the oxytocin out, though, we started dating people. It's true. You know? We're like, let's make this more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> let's pepper in some new oxytocin hits. Let's keep the oxytocin flowing around here. Yeah, why We know not? what drugs we serve. <laughs> we serve the love drug. How could it hurt you? You know? Hate's only going to take you down down into the darkest vortexes ever. It's uh, only going to lead you uh, to more hate. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful in any aspect of your life where you do that because I think it's admitting defeat. Whereas love is like... Um, it's like a mushroom. It's healing things. It's and it's spreading, and it wants to spread, and it wants to heal more, and it wants to uh, help people adapt and and feel more connected. So, I don't know. I just try to choose love. I think it just is really as simple as that. And uh, for me, the most like the the most loving act I can do is 
try to make films every now and then that reflect uh, s- some of the fucking awesome magical things I've felt. You know. Yeah, I think I think movies are can be like a a love drug. Oh yeah. You know, to have oh, you yeah. into that space. Movies have gotten me through so much shit in my life. God damn. Movies have taught me so much. You know, movies have, have they helped me grow up faster than I needed to, mm-hmm. you know, but they help you. Experiencing stuff, experience more than like maybe one person could in this human experience. Absolutely. So why not? I mean, it's, it's really a gift, a, com- a gift of compassion in that way, you know, getting to kind of live through other people's shoes or seeing what it's like or intimately be connected to their ups and downs, their gains and losses, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So much so that I, I had a hard time going to the movies for a while because every time a movie would end, I'd be like so devastated that like my relationship with them is over. Yeah. You know, and that I don't get to see how this plays out or how it goes further. Or, yeah. You like know. after Avatar. Remember we, after we saw Avatar, we were both suffering from post-Avatar depression. <laughs> we, were. we were like, we can't, we can't live in that world anymore. What yeah. the fuck? That's how I felt after the Beatles documentary, that, that nine hour one we oh, watched. Yeah. You just come out of it like. Oh, man, I was just in the 70s or whatever. What the fuck? (laughs) That was when I was supposed to be around anyway. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I mean. It's time to shine then. uh, It's, um, you know, it's it's my favorite art form. Uh, it's it's the thing that I've I've paid most attention to. Uh, It competes with music. Uh, I think music is its own category. I, I think, you know, there's art and there's music in a way, you know. So I'm, not, I'm just keeping it in a different, it's a, it's its own, like, kind of mystical realm. But, uh, yeah, uh, films have changed my life, and they taught me how to grow up, and they taught me uh, so much about the way the, the adult world works. Uh, because I watched, I grew up and watching a lot of movies from the 70s and 80s, which were a little bit more raw and real. And I think the movies now don't prepare you for the world that's actually going on around you. Oh, yeah, it's so... They're woke and they're preparing you to go be a cookie cutter, little sensitive fucking pussy ass citizen, you know, imperialist. And uh, they don't challenge that. They're just so commercial, too. It's just so, like, basic. I mean, they're used to, like, we're going through the Criterion Collection. You're like, wow, scripts used to get you somewhere and trust the audience and be a more full reflection of the human experience, not just like. I don't know, heartbreak, basic, you know, just kind of like yeah, boy cheats on girl, but like more nuance and complicated, not just good and bad, you know, it, it yeah. felt like there was like a more gray area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I you know, I think um, you can imbue your films if you're good at it, uh, so they're rich with your experience, you know? And, like, our films, for for that matter, our films should just get better and better, I think, because they'll just be imbued with more of the experiences that we've had. And, like I'm saying, we'll come at it from a wider consciousness than we ever have before, if we're, if we're doing the right thing. Yeah. 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 They can really do the opposite, though, when they're not made well. <laughs> you know? I watched a couple trailers last night, and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. This yeah. is rough out there. It can really be a dark reflection of just, like, how basic uh, things can be or, uh, you know, how how just dwindled down the human spirit can get, mm. you know? But I want to, I mean, uh, I think that, like uh, there's there's documentaries that i've seen once or twice 25 years ago that like changed Still stick with yeah you. like that just and I, i'll never forget it it's like i know those people and you know for us to contribute to that just feels like the most important thing that i know how i could do is because it's changing people's minds you know and it's not through beating them head o- over the head with a political agenda or a bunch of information it's changing their minds by exposing by exposure you know, it feels like an obligation. If if we can do that, we should do that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I feel like we're also entering this new area where you're, you've put out enough movies that you recently got recognized as a certified artist and now our hometown of Peekskill, New York. Yeah. So we're going to, we are 
um, eligible, you especially are eligible for an artist loft, which is like you could get like a two bedroom or like a bedroom with a studio for like twelve hundred or something yeah. crazy. And then the CRNY thing, creative creatives rebuild new york Every everyone kept sending us like hey apply for these grants or whatever you like new york state's trying to do ubi basically universal basic income for artists so i applied for both of us and i got it fucking amazing yeah i mean i feel like you've been talking about universal basic income for i don't know since we started this podcast and it was just kind of like part of your mind's eye about it being important and artists being supported and it just feels like the right time for yeah. You to get that validation of like, okay, I keep making these movies and no one <laughs> pays for them, you know, for the most part. Yeah. yeah. I know no one would see them if there was a paywall. Like, like I want to be honest well, with but myself. I mean, no even, one would see but them. even the investment, like for the most part, it's they're self-invested. Yeah. Except, God, we got to do a big shout out to Noah. Noah Lampert. My our bro. buddy. My, bro, my bro. Our bro really really came in and helped us make yeah. american sunset and executive produce that movie yeah. so he financially really helped that be something that exists so yep. mad shout out to noah and his crabs and all the ways he makes money in weird ways yeah and yeah. then shares it with, <laughs> with people like us <laughs> yeah but i think um you know it's uh it's it's high stakes for me and i want it to be and um I think you're willing to take more risks artistically and try different things if it's high stakes for you, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think for a lot of people it's not, it's, it's a hobby or they have just many other things that they could fall back. I have nothing to fall back on. There's not, there's no fault. Like this is, I'm so deep into this that I've made gigantic sacrifices for, of, for my comfort in life, Mm -hmm. what I could have to pursue this art. So to me, it better turn out the way I want and it better get out there and yeah, we were, I better be able to keep doing it. <laughs> we were talking the other day and you were like, if this if this isn't coming out the way I want, I'm going to start being a deli boy again. I would rather make sandwiches than put out stuff with my name on it that I'm not proud of. And uh, I'm not talking about... Um, we don't have to talk about it. Do you no, want no, no, no. I'm saying I'm not talking about American Sunset. I mean, I'm like... I, oh, no, I, we're I definitely proud of that. it. Yeah. I, like, there, I didn't have to run that by anyone for approval. But a lot of the stuff that we do have to run by people for approval, um, they lead with fear. And, you know, they, they're so scared right. to do anything that it's, it's remotely could register as different. But the, the fact of the matter is that that's what pierces through people's consciousness. That's what, that's what makes something stand out. That's what makes you remember something. That's what makes you share something is when it feels a little bit different, when it when it feels like a unique expression. Totally. So um, if I have made the sacrifices of having um, a pet, having a kid, just so we're available to make movies, having a pet, having a kid, having a house, <laughs> having fucking steady financial incomes, having fucking doing all the things that my friends do together, all this stuff, the, all the sacrifices that we've made across the board uh, in terms of comfortability, the other thing, the things that people pursue, we've sacrificed to make movies. They better fucking come out the way I want them to. Yeah. Of course I'm going to use the fucking music I want. If the only consequence is that I can't get it played in Japan right now because of a YouTube thing, great. Fine. Yeah, our okay. channel's been demonetized forever, so it's yeah, like, they're, they're why like, not? Hey, they're like, hey, by the way, you can't monetize this thing. It's like, oh, you demonetized us for fucking shit we say on our podcast. Like, god damn. God damn, how pathetic are these fucking goddamn tech giants. They fuck with people like us. They see that we have an opportunity. The, just the views on Oxiana alone. And the ad revenue we could make from that. But aren't you kind of aren't you glad that there's not a fucking weird commercial in that movie when people watch it? Yeah, Cass. But I'm also getting to the age where I'm like, uh, being a purist has gotten me nowhere because literally nobody recognizes it. No one fucking cares or recognizes it. What the <laughs> fuck is being a purist? When, when people have fucking skip the ad or whatever, no one cares. Yeah. I I could use the fucking two thousand dollars a month that that movie could get us. Yeah. You know what I mean? We could pay rent. We could pay off our debts. You know what I'm saying? At some point, we got to stop rolling over. I just try to look at you the know. bright side. Is all. I know you do. I know it's very sweet, but I uh, yeah I get I get passionate because. <laughs> it, it just feels like uh, like a big bully picking on little people to demonetize our channel. It's like we do podcasts and documentaries. 
Yeah, no, like our crazy. stuff's not even like particularly controversial. We're talking about psychedelics, you know. I guess that's controversial. I don't <laughs> know, is it? For a few more years, but yeah. not for much longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, good times. Good times. You didn't smoke any weed. I know. I got more work to do today at some point. Yeah. We're going to Abu Dhabi soon, so I gotta book those flights. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go do uh, some travel films. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. That's cool. It feels like another thing that we, um, from a long time ago, incepted and just uh, I don't know, right connections at the right time with the right people, puts us in a position where we can go. And hopefully make something that like that we really dig and are proud of, and we can like replicate in other places and do multiple seasons for. It'd be really cool to have um, to have something like that to go do like like three or four times a year, like like once a season we go make a a little season of this travel show. So calling it in. Yeah, you got to call it in. Absolutely. What else are we calling in? Oh, we're we're gonna be making um a documentary called Wooks about Wooks. If you don't know what Wooks are, you can look it up. But like you, I like the way you surmise it. You're like hippies in their final form. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, the, like the crustiest of the crusty hippies. We're gonna go out in pursuit of them uh, probably in July, and we'll probably do a little bit of fundraising for that. But if you're the type of person that wants to swoop in and save the day, like Noah did get in touch um because it'd be really fun to have uh some collaborators on this some people to believe in it some people for our credits Mm -hmm. you know and um so we're gonna make wooks we have some other ideas i don't know if we should announce quite just yet but yeah we're in a development on a series we don't have to necessarily talk about the details but we are in development on a series that's been really cool trying to cast that and um Yes, good things, good things brewing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like I think, I think a way to put a nice bow around this whole thing is like these. Uh, this isn't like it, it is luck, but it is also devotion. Like we we've um, we've devoted ourselves and we've paid our dues a lot, and we've taken a lot of L's and we've talked about a lot of them on here, <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, things are changing up a little bit and some some goodwill is headed our way. And I'm starting to feel good again. It's good. I feel like I've, I've, I'm like just coming out of a detox or something. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. No, I like I have more ideas than my brain can handle or, you know, my body can handle sometimes. So it, it's a good position to be in. Yeah. If you like our movie, American Sunset, really, it means the world to us to, you know, share it with a like minded homie. If you're listening to to this, you're a like minded homie. If there's other people in your life that are like us, they'd probably appreciate that movie too. Right on. Or or any of our movies. And join our uh, Church of Chill Discord. I am picking up the zine again. So oh yeah, our community's going to make a zine. It feels like such a big L that I kind of dropped the ball on that, but I knew that like when the energy started to pick back up again that we'd pick it up and Yeah. I think I kind of I like I said this on the Discord, I got a little over ambitious and like being like wanting to make it structured and everything fit into this box, but I'm like we have a community of artists and creative people. Let's just get our art in one place and I, have a book about it. I mean, even like if you look at the way we make films, it's like don't bite off more than you can chew. Like, yeah. like I, I think that, that that's an immediate hurdle a lot of people put in their way is like, you know, instead of just doing the thing that they can do right now, mm-hmm. they they skip ahead to having to do the thing that is way bigger scope than they can handle. Right. So, you know, my first movie was seven minutes and I made it with with two other people because that's all I could handle. That was the scope I could handle. My next one was six. The one after that one was 14. Yeah, I have dreams. 23. Dream- yeah, <laughs> I have dreams of this, like, trip companion that's really, like, hits all the beats and really s- is supportive, but, like, let's just, I let's think just that, get our stuff uh, together. To me, the trip companion zine is such a good idea that it shouldn't be the first thing our community does together. Yeah. I feel like it should be, like, look how good we are at this. Now let's apply it to the trip companion. Because I feel like that's a thing that'll be on a lot of people's coffee tables for a long time to come. So yeah. So let's you, get our print print flow down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Like let, let's like figure out how we want it to look and feel, and like and try some things, and then land on where we where we want to be with that. But cool. 
Um, yeah, join our sacred art community at patreon.com slash church of chill. Lots of bonus podcasts there, other things. Um, our radio show, which is called Church of Chill. My favorite place. Yeah, my favorite place too. So um, we love y'all. Peace, love, and magic.